Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now we're at day two of the Qualcomm Tech Summit, which means we've now got all the juicy details about the Snapdragon 8, I was about to say 875, about the Snapdragon 888. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. <music> So this year's Tech Summit, of course, is a virtual event because of all the things that are going on in the world. However, Qualcomm have put on a great show and they've really helped us understand what's gone into the Snapdragon 888. So let's start by looking at the CPU, then we'll have a look at the GPU and then a few of the other things that they've announced around the other stuff that goes into a system on a chip, which is all the stuff, including AI and image processing and all that stuff. So first of all, the CPU. So the new CPU is called the Cryo 680, following the Cryo naming that we've had in previous years. Qualcomm are saying there's a 25% uplift in performance and 25% more power efficiency. So that's really good numbers there. But how are they achieving that? What's inside? This is the big question. So now we can reveal that the Snapdragon 888 has the Cortex-X1 in it. It's the prime core clocked at 2.84 gigahertz and it has a massive one megabyte of L2 cache. And then the other three big cores are Cortex A78 cores, each clocked at 2.4 gigahertz with 512K of level two cache. And then of course, we've got the four efficiency cores, which are the Cortex A55, which you've also had in previous generations, four megabytes of L3 cache, and then a further three megabytes of system cache, tying it all together with the GPU and the AI systems and so on. So if you remember, I've got a whole video here on this channel about the X1. The X1 is designed to really increase the single threaded core performance, having one CPU that is bigger, more powerful, will use more energy, however it can get the work done. And then they're backing up, there's three Cortex A78 cores, and then backing those up, there are four Cortex A55 cores. So that should give us good single uh, core uh, performance, and also, of course, continuing that uplift in the multi-threaded score. So it'll be interesting to see when we have actual benchmarks running, when I can run speed test G and so on, but this is looking promising. This is the kind of a setup we were expecting. Of course, the whole processor is built on five nanometers as I predicted back in February of this year because Qualcomm announced the X60 5G modem, which is integrated into the Snapdragon 888, and they said it would be a five nanometer part. So of course, that meant that the new Snapdragon would also be five nanometers. And if we move over to the GPU, this is the Adreno 660. Qualcomm are saying this is one of their biggest bumps in performance that they've had. 35% greater graphics rendering while achieving 20% more power efficiency. And it's interesting if you look at the block diagram, the Adreno 660 includes the GPU, but it's more than the GPU. We've also, of course, got the video encode and decode done in hardware nowadays, of course. And of course, the display driver. And of course, if you've watched my video about 90 hertz and 144 hertz displays, you'll know the importance of the relationship between the display driver and the GPU. So of course, the new GPU is not only about raw performance, there are also some new features that Qualcomm have added in. Two of them are particularly interesting. Let's have a look. So the first feature is this Qualcomm Game Quick Touch, which basically improves response times. Of course, because we're using touch screens, okay, how quickly that touch can be scanned and monitored, and it can be taken down to the CPU, to the GPU for it all to work out, and then the screen can be updated. Okay, the quicker you can make that, the better, and the Qualcomm Game Quick Touch improves touch response times. And another great feature they've brought here is variable rate shading. Now we've seen variable rate shading in desktops and in consoles. And what it basically means is that when the pixel shader runs, it doesn't need to run for every single pixel on the display. The game writer, the developer can say, actually over here in the corner or back there in the background, I want you to only render one in every two or one in every four pixels different to maybe what you find on consoles or PCs, this is two or four pixels, and use the color, the resulting color that you get from that pixel shader for the pixel and its neighbor or its neighbors around there, which of course means you actually render less pixels overall. And that's variable, meaning that it can be de defined which areas of the screen have it. So where the action is going on, maybe you want greater fidelity, things that haven't changed very much, things that are happening in the background, things that are blurred anyway, because they're way in the distance or on the edge of your peripheral vision, those things can be kind of treated uh, less. So it's good for gaming, 
Also good for VR, particularly since the eye has, of course, peripheral vision and then what you see directly ahead of it. And of course, by using that, you can get an up to 30% increase in performance while maintaining visually the same kind of fidelity. Although, of course, pixel peeping wise, it would actually be different, but your eye really can't tell the difference. Uh, and of course, that also saves air energy when rendering all of those frames. Of course, Qualcomm are big, one of the biggest uh, companies behind 5G. So let's look a bit about the connectivity and then let's look at the new camera tech that they've put into the Snapdragon 888. So looking at connectivity, as I mentioned yesterday in my video, it's got the Snapdragon X60 uh, modem in it. That means it's a third generation 5G modem. You've got millimeter wave and sub six all integrated into the uh, chip itself. That means there's a potential of a 7.5 gigabits per second download, three gigabits per second upload. But then next to that, you've also got the Qualcomm Fast Connect 6900 system, which basically gives us Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E. We've also got Bluetooth 5 and uh, then dual antennas and premium audio. So there's really some great connectivity here, which is what you'd expect, of course, from Qualcomm Quality Communications. These are the people that know how to get our devices out there talking, whether it's 5G, whether it's Wi-Fi, whether it's Bluetooth, you can see here this chip has it all. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, they used the word triple down when it comes to the ISP. So the new Spectra 580 ISP has now got three ISPs in it, giving us a speed of 2.7 gigapixels a second it can process, which is a 35% speed increase. What does that mean practically? What it means is that the device can capture, for example, three 4K videos all at the same time. And if, for example, they were using different sensors with different lenses on them, then you can actually capture all three simultaneously, which will allow you then, of course, to do all great kind of things with editing, great kind of things with HDR, great kind of things with uh, being able to uh, kind of zoom in and out seamlessly. And the same for the cameras. You can capture all three cameras simultaneously up to 28 megapixels. And because of that great processing power, you can actually burst capture 120 photos in one second. And of course, that is uh, great for capturing the moment when no one's blinking, capturing that moment when everyone's smiling. That really, really helps. And of course, there's improvements in the low light architecture here. And for the first time for Qualcomm, we've got 10 bit HDR HEIF photo capture, which means you can capture photos in one billion shades of color. And now for the first time, we have 4K HDR capture for video. Now, of course, we're all used to HDR for photos, but this is now for video. So we're capturing 4K live stream from the sensors and those ISPs are working there to do computational HDR on the video. So you get a greater dynamic range. Things that are in the shadows can be brought out and seen much more clearly. But now at 4K video, that's pretty interesting feature. And personally, what I like here for the camera is the use of AI or machine learning, better to say, for the 3A. That means A, autofocus, A, auto exposure, A, auto white balance. So rather than just using an algorithm that someone has written to say, well, I think this is where it should be focused. I think this is what the exposure should be. By training these neural networks up with thousands thousands and thousands of example photos and then showing the AI what is a good example of what the right focus should be, what is the right exposure, what is the right white balance for this different types of photos. Now, rather than just something bright in the corner completely ruining the white balance, the uh, machine learning can say, well, actually, no, we know that the main subject here is all this other stuff here. So we're going to do the white balance for that or we're going to do the focus for that. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what this can do in terms of computational photography in the next generation of phones we're going to see in 2021. So a quick summary of the camera features. We've got the Spectra 580 image signal processor. Of course, that's a triple ISP up to 2.7 gigabits per second. It can take up to 200 megapixel photos, up to 28 megapixel triple camera at 30 uh, frames per second. And then, of course, we've got 4K video capture. At the same time, you can also do 64 megapixel photos, or you can do 8K video capture at 30 FPS, or you can do slow motion 720p at 960 FPS, or you can do 4K video capture at, yes, 120 frames a second.
Which brings us into the sixth generation Qualcomm AI engine, something I mentioned yesterday. So now they've redesigned the Hexagon processor. It's now the Hexagon 780 processor responsible for all the AI. And the key thing here is there are different types of operation that happen when you do AI. Tensor, vector, scalar. Don't worry too much about it. Basically different types of mathematical operation that happen when you want to do machine learning stuff. And previously they've been kind of separate things that are disparate and they talk to each other and, and you know, and the CPU talks to them. But now they've been fused together so that they are working much more in cohesion with each other, which means of course you've got the shared memory, you've got all three things working side by side, which means you get greater performance. That's the bottom line, greater performance. So when of course you're dealing with video streams, when you're dealing with photos, when you're dealing with things that have to happen quickly, the performance here is important and they are off, they are saying here, Qualcomm are saying here, there's these big improvements in performance across the board there. And overall, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, Qualcomm are saying that if you use the uh, Hexagon uh, DSP along with GPU and CPU, then the overall system performance is 26 tops compared to 15 tops that we had in the Snapdragon 8. 65. Right, one of the quick features I want to mention before we close is the new hypervisor technology that you find in the Snapdragon 888. Now its first use of course will be for security. Now I understand if security might make you yawn a little, but just think about this for a moment. If you've got your main operating system, let's say Android running, and then another operating system, a much more smaller, secure, dedicated, efficient operating system just for, let's say, reading your fingerprint stuff, processing that fingerprint data. If they are running in completely two separate environments at a hardware level, we're talking about hardware protection, okay, that's great for security going forward. But the hypervisor also has some other advantages. So the way Qualcomm are showing it here is you've got a work profile and you've got a personal profile and it's almost like running two versions of Android at the same time, each separate according to the hardware that you get inside of the uh, of the chip. And also they're showing the, the other operating system there for doing, let's say, the fingerprint reading or, or entering into the phone. So separate uh, operating systems for each of your profiles, work and for personal. And then because you can actually go even further, you can actually have an isolated OS for every app that runs. So if you've certainly got really sensitive stuff happening here, it would be great if they were actually face scanned. Fingerprint reader is running separate in its separate OS, which means it can't leak data through whatever means these clever hackers find. You can't leak the data between the primary OS and the secondary OS where they're isolated for each app. So that's also going to be interesting to see what the internet at large will do when it comes to running actually multiple operating systems on a Snapdragon 888 device. That could be really interesting in terms of what virtualization and hypervisor stuff we see coming in the future. Uh, the internet, there are some very clever people out there and I'm sure this is going to be an interesting feature that people are going to get into. Okay, so in summary, what have we got? We've got the Cryo 680 CPU with the Cortex-X1, which is giving us a 25% performance boost. We've got the Adreno 660 with a 35% increase in performance. The whole chip, of course, is built on five nanometers. Great connectivity, 5G, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth 5. Increases in performance for the AI. Things like the variable shader rate for the Elite Gaming. And of course, that triple ISP giving 22.7 gigapixels per second and allowing things like 4K video capture with computational HDR. And so lots of interesting things here. And it will be interesting to see how the smartphone manufacturers actually take these features and incorporate them into their devices. Is one thing that Qualcomm provide the technology. Now let's see what companies like OnePlus and Xiaomi and Sony and so on and so on can do with that when they build their next generation of flagship phones. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Now we're all at the mercy of the YouTube uh, recommendation algorithm. So if you like my videos, the safest, the best thing to do is to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon. I think that people say, oh, I didn't know you posted any new videos. I haven't seen a video of yours for three months and I've been posting them like two, three videos a week. So you've got to make sure you subscribe. Otherwise you could miss out. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.